Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to another episode of Life Without Baggage. This week, I'm going to be talking about using imagery for personal growth, and also for spiritual growth. So before we get started, I would also ask that if you're a fan of this podcast and if these have helped you, that you would consider buying one of my books on Amazon. There are six on Amazon. I have two devotional books. I have a workbook that can help you process emotions. It's actually called Life Without Baggage. That's where I got the name for the podcast. And also, you've probably heard a lot about my book, Anxiety, Depression, and Helplessness, that I've been talking about and sharing chapters from the last few months. So I would appreciate that. I keep the prices very low so that these are available for as many people as possible. So let's get into today's podcast. So I started thinking about this topic and I want to share first of all about what I am talking about when I talk about imagery and what I am not talking about. Sometimes people get nervous about uh, practices that aren't consistent with the Bible. So if you are concerned about that, I want to let you know that What I'm sharing is going to be very conservative and consistent with what you believe, but also helping you understand more about why God gave us the capacity to use imagery, our imagination, sanctified imagination. There's a verse that talks about the eyes of our heart. I I think that's in Ephesians. So there's a, a spiritual sensitivity we use imagery to worry, but we can also use it to plan and we can also use it to come to a place of peace or we can use imagery to motivate ourselves. So I'm going to share some practical ways to use imagery to help you grow personally and some of my favorite visuals that I use with clients that um, these are my favorites and they're very loosely organized, but this is a little different from what I usually do, but I thought this might be fun. So let's start with some of the practical ones. I like to use imagery of a vending machine when people are thinking about their relationships. So in a vending machine, we know what we want. We put our money in, we make an investment, and hopefully what we want comes back. Well, relationships are like that too, that in healthy relationships, we're putting something of ourselves into it and hopefully good things from the other person come back. But in unhealthy relationships, what can happen is we're investing, but instead of getting the cookies or the chips or raisins, what comes back is nothing, or chips are all smashed, or there's a worm in the candy bar, something awful. So if something unpleasant, unwanted keeps coming back, then sometimes we need to think about how much are we going to keep investing in this particular vending machine. Another one of my favorite uh, images that I use with people is For individuals that are just starting to date, maybe they're divorced 
or they're just went through a breakup or they're, they just need some input, some coaching. So what I will remind them is if you've ever gone through the DVD bin at Walmart, in my area, Walmarts often have a huge bin of DVDs. And that dating is a, is a lot like going through that bin. A lot of the DVDs are in that bin for a reason. They're not what you're looking for. So I just caution people that dating is a process. You're probably not going to meet the right person for you the very first try. So you need to be prepared for a process. It's a lot like looking for a good DVD in that DVD bin at Walmart. So this is sort of related to imagery. Maybe you remember the character Columbo. There's a lot of TV shows and some movies. Columbo was a detective. So sometimes I encourage people to think about Columbo. So if you don't know who he is, he was very smart, but he was very non-threatening. He would go to investigate a murder, and he usually knew who it was pretty fast, and he would encounter, have to ask questions, and generally he got a great deal of hostility as he honed in on the person that he knew committed the murder, but he still needed information. He still needed to ask questions as he kind of firmed up whatever evidence he needed. So why am I sharing that? Well, sometimes we have to interact with people that are very harsh, negative. And we can meet that negativity and that harshness with more negativity and more confrontation. But that's not necessary. If you know that that's what's coming, you can use a different approach. You can be more like Columbo and just kind of express, hmm, well, I was kind of confused about why you said this, that, and the other. Why you said that you weren't going to do that. So instead of getting confrontational, expressing all kinds of anger or sadness, we sometimes can use more of an indirect approach and ask a question, express confusion. So I don't automatically encourage people to use the Columbo approach. But if you've tried direct approaches, if you've tried to be polite and reasonable, the things I talk about in the boundaries episodes, and those haven't worked, maybe it's time to try Columbo. Another image that I like to encourage people to try is like a file cabinet. And you might want to use this imagery if there's something that you're worrying about or something that's emotionally kind of overwhelming and you need to be able to like put a bookmark in it and then come back to it later. So what I encourage people to do is use an image of a safe or a filing cabinet or some kind of a box where you visualize that, okay, I'm going to put this concern, I'm going to put this emotion in that filing cabinet. And then when I have a chance, I'm going to take it out and work on it a little bit more. So we're not shoving it in a closet that we're going to slam shut and lock. We are postponing. We are choosing a time where we will come back to it. So that leads me to another image that I encourage people to consider. So this image is more of that closet. If you have a tendency to stuff emotions, and maybe for many years you have stuffed emotions, tried to ignore things, decided you don't want to deal with them, made vows, I'm not going to deal with this, I'm not going to feel this, I'm not going to acknowledge this, then the closet gets very full. And at some point, the closet door starts swinging open and stuff starts falling out. So that's an image that I encourage people to think about if they find that they get panicky and they don't know where it's coming from. 
or all of a sudden they're overwhelmed with some kind of emotion. It may be that you've been shoving things in the closet and haven't been addressing them a little at a time. If you've been listening to my podcast the last few months, you've heard me talk about learned helplessness. And in learned helplessness, the image that I share with people is that of how baby elephants are trained. When they're little, they're tied to a post or a tree, something that won't move. And so over time, they learn that every time they try to take a step forward, it pulls them back. When those elephants have matured, they're very strong, powerful animals. They can control that elephant just by the rope around the leg. It doesn't even have to be tied to anything anymore, but they have learned that they are helpless to move forward. So sometimes I use that imagery with people to help them understand why they might be stuck that maybe early in life or for a long period of time in their adult life, there were things that didn't get better. There were things that didn't improve no matter what they tried. And maybe they got to a point where they just sort of stopped trying to exert any control or change. That sometimes that image of the baby elephant being trained for the circus helps people understand themselves better. And then we can address taking small steps that will help them move forward again. I'm going to share some spiritual images now. So many of you are familiar with Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is about Jesus as our good shepherd. So in order to feel peace or in order to just draw closer to the Lord, you can read those verses and and just allow yourself to meditate on the imagery in Psalm 23. It talks about still waters. It talks about the lush pasture. So you can use the imagery that the Bible provides to draw closer to the Lord. Those images, those restful images, calm us emotionally. And so feeding on an image that you can draw from in the Bible can help you come to a better place of peace and also allows the the word of God to get more deeply into your, your being. Another really positive image is Psalm 91, where it talks about being covered by the wings of the Lord, like an eagle covers its nest. And so that is a very soothing image of the power of God covering us, regardless of what's going on. So again, you can meditate on those images and allow them to speak to you and to comfort you and to calm you. This next image from Colossians is so good, I'm going to read it to you. This comes from Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It talks about what Jesus' death on the cross did for us. Having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the bond with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us. These are the, the sins that we've committed. This note, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to his cross. So everything that you've ever done that was sin, he paid for, and then it was nailed to the cross. It was canceled. It was canceled because Jesus paid for it. This is really powerful. It's something you might want to meditate on, especially if you have trouble with shame or guilt, to know that Jesus paid for what you feel ashamed of. So you don't have to carry that shame, that guilt, and that can give you peace and that can help you move forward. So those are just a few examples of ways that we can use visuals or images to help us in our growth, to help us find a place of peace and to motivate us. 
So let me pray for us today. Lord, I thank you that you've given us the capacity to use our imaginations to plan and to meditate on you, on your word, to draw from the treasures that you've deposited into us through your word, that you speak to us through these images. So I pray that this person would understand how you might want to speak to them or encourage them through these images in the Bible and to continue in the process that they are working on for themselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to talk to you next time a little bit more about spiritual imagery. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening, and if this helped you, share it with a friend.